Josh, I have something important to tell you. What is it? I think that I'm being catfished. <gasps> no way. Yeah, way. How do you know? It's just, it's so obvious. I'll tell you more after the intro. Q intro. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Real Deal, Ball State's premier entertainment news show. I'm your host, Josh Pavlovsky. And I'm Colin Marith. So, how did you pick up that you're being catfished? Spill the beans. Well, I mean, for one thing, I've been stood up twice. No way. You were stood up on your last date? Yep. <laughs> That's so sad. Why else do you think you're being catfished? Okay, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but she sounds really, like, familiar. Oh yeah, like who? I'll tell you after this first segment. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another film talk with, another, with none other than yours truly. So I've gotten the chance to watch Creed 3 recently, the third film in the Creed sequel. In this film, Damien, who is played by Jonathan Majors, and Donnie, otherwise known as Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan, uh, they were childhood friends, but while the young Creed found success in the ring, Damien wound up in prison for 18 years. Now he's out and he's got some issues with his former friend. A boxer himself, Damien feels robbed of his career and is here to take the title and everything Donnie's got. This was Michael B. Jordan's first time directing his own film, and for me, it was such a fantastic film with a beautiful cinematography and great action from both stars of the film. I agree, Creed Three wouldn't get the excellent accolades it deserved if Jordan's directing hadn't been top-notch and innovative as it was his vision that informs the rest of the acclaim for the movie. Uh, Creed Three demonstrates that the Rocky franchise is in good hands, especially if Jordan continues to helm further Creed or Rocky spinoffs. Uh, I would say, the fight scenes in Creed III, however, have drawn praise from several critics for their choreography and visual design, particularly the given increased significance and have in relation to Adonis Creed's narrative. Uh, Michael B. Jordan's love of anime also searched as inspiration for the battle scenes, uh, for the fight scenes in the movie, which had never been done before. So I would say after Creed III, a straight sequel, Creed IV featuring Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Creed is the most likely Rocky film that could be released. The series hero is playing a bigger role in the third chapter than he has in the first two of his flicks, which have been wildly popular. Now that Michael B. Jordan is starting, starring in and directing the Creed films, he can fully assume ownership of the Rocky franchise, just like Sylvester uh, Stallone did in the past. Uh, Creed III might wrap up the original trilogy of the Adonis movies and provide the overall framework for Creed IV's continuation of the plot. Without a question, Creed 3 is definitely one of my favorite movies starring these two distinctive performers. And I'm really excited for Michael B. Jordan to continue the Creed franchise. I appreciate your interest and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me who? Josh, don't get mad, but I, I think it, it might be you. How dare you? Why do you think that? She just sounds oddly familiar, and you're the only one who would do something I like this. I swear it's not me. I wouldn't go that far. Both of you guys have O's in your names. Coco and Josh. Yours does too. On top of that, you gave me really bad dating advice. Come on, I was joking. You should have known. Don't blame this on me. You should have, you should have said it was a joke. I'm gullible. <laughs> Whatever. If you want to be cleared, give me your phone for proof. No way, privacy. Oh, so then it was you. No, it still wasn't. If it wasn't you, give me your phone. Next segment. Hey now, it's a rainy day here in Funcy, Indiana, and if you're looking for some existential ass shit, look no further than Interpol's debut album, Turn On The Bright Lights. 
Interpol formed in Manhattan, New York in 1997 and was, re and was partly responsible for the Meet Me in the Bathroom movement that included bands like The Strokes, Yeah Yeah Yeahs, The Moldy Peaches, TV on the Radio, and multiple others. Turn on the Bright Lights drew a lot of comparisons to other bands such as Radiohead's OK Computer, or more specifically songs like Obstacle One, which is probably as close to Joy Division as it gets on the album. The band hasn't really been able to shake this image of being derivative of other bands like Joy Division, which I don't think is completely true, but I think that the influence is definitely there, and Paul Banks' vocal delivery really does sound like Ian Curtis. Sorry, man, it, it does. But this album is absolutely amazing and is quite reflective of the post-9-11 aftermath and everything it brought on. To me, the album acts as a debt Interpol owes to post-punk and New Wave's predecessors, while also keeping those iconic downstroke and smooth bass line rhythms that are unique to that time. I give Turn On The Bright Lights a 10 out of 10. This thing is phenomenal and is essential for getting into the saviors of rock era of music. Thank you. Get over here. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neely here to talk to you about another important event in the pop culture world. If you didn't already know, this week the Lollapalooza lineup was announced. If you're sitting there thinking, what's that, don't worry, I'll explain. Lollapalooza is a music festival held in Grant Park in Chicago. It's like one of the biggest festivals in the world because of who performs there, the number of attendants, and how many other festivals Lollapalooza puts on globally. And this week, the highly anticipated lineup was released multiple months of waiting, and it was packed with star power. The headliners are Kendrick Lamar, Billie Eilish, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Odessa, My Mother, Lana Del Rey, Carol G, The 1975, and TXT. Last year's Lollapalooza, to name a few, Dua Lipa, J-Hope, J. Cole, and Green Day all put on amazing shows and made sure to make it a memorable experience. This year is sure to be even better, and I know I cannot wait to attend this year. Thanks for having me. I'll see you next time, and let us know if you plan on attending this year's Lollapalooza. Get off. Is your phone entirely filled with episodes of Paw Patrol? Uh, well, and the Paw Patrol movie. That's so funny. And maybe a few games. Do you believe it's not me now? Yeah, I mean, I guess, but... If it's not you, then who is it? I mean, this is just, this is just making me sad now. We'll find them, I swear. <sighs> Everything about them is so... So familiar, but I just, I can't put my nose on it. <laughs> Can you smell what's coming up next? No. What? It's time for the final words. Oh! Oh, oh hey. I didn't know you were there. Yes, I did. I do this all the time. I need to find something new. Hey, it's my final words. You already know that. I'm Colin Marth. You already know that. Unless it's your first time watching. I don't know why you're watching this episode first. You're a little weird for that. But to each their own. I wanted to talk about a few things coming up this weekend. This episode's gonna air after all this stuff happens, but I think it's exciting to talk about it anyways, because it's relevant to my current time. Equinox Music Festival is this Saturday. That's in two days. That's March 25th. Uh, I'm gonna be emceeing. It's gonna be in collaboration with Colin's Corner, which is super exciting. I'll be introducing each band, pretending like it's an episode of my show, which is super cool. Uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. But on top of that, my own band is playing. Seventh Cloud Society will be there. We're playing a pretty explosive set. We're going to be closing it with a pretty wild song, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, and it's going to be an awesome event. It's inside Botswana now. It's supposed to be outside, but it's going to be raining cats and dogs, and I don't want to get cat scratch fever. So I was like, guys, can we please do it inside? And they said, yeah, OK. Uh, but that, that's pretty much all that uh, for Equinox coming up, which is awesome. Uh, hey. I've been listening to a lot of music lately, um, a lot more Nirvana. I'm a, I was always kind of a big Nirvana fan, but a lot more these days, uh, including songs like uh, Scentless Apprentice, uh, which is one that I listened to the first time uh, yesterday, and it's really good. Also Breed, which is another really good one. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't ever listen to that one, because I was like, eh, it's probably not that good. It, it's amazing. I can't say what it is, um, because it's very like, like vulgar. The description I want to give it. Um, it, it is awesome, though. And uh, I've been reading lately. I didn't know I could do that. I bet you didn't either. Uh, but there's, there's this book called Cat's Cradle, uh, and it's awesome. It's by Kurt, uh, Kurt Vonnegut Jr. 
Uh, and it's a very funny book, and I love funny things. Uh, and my goal is to read a bunch of books this year. I know I won't. Uh, they bore me really easily, but I at least want to finish this one. Uh, I also just found out that these uh, shoes that I ordered on Mercari, the order got put through. I'm getting uh, Vans half cabs that have Snoopy on them. I'm so excited. Uh, and that's that. But anyways, uh, my name is uh, Colin Marth. Uh, come to Equinox. Uh, see my band. Uh, future episodes of Colin's Corner Live will be on YouTube once I edit them. Uh, Namby Pamby and Men of the Flood will be on there. Expect them. Super exciting week for me. But anyways, I'm going to hand it over to Josh because I've been talking so much. I love you. Goodbye. I'm Josh Pavlovsky, and I've also been listening to a lot of new music recently. And that includes Sabrina Carpenter's deluxe edition to her hit album, Emails I Can't Send, Forward, which features four new tracks, Lonesome, Opposite, Things I Wish You Said, and Feather. And other news, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour is gearing up and starting with all the glitz and glamour. And in preparation, she dropped four previous tracks, which include two Hunger Games tracks, Eyes Open and Safe and Sound, and then two other tracks, All the Girls I've Loved Before and If This Were a Movie. Um, I wish I, I I'm, I'm not personally going to the tour, but I wish I was. So, I don't know. I can't wait to see all the content for it. That's all I have for you. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. As always, thank you for watching. And if you want to see anything else from us here at The Real Deal, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, our website for all things entertainment. I'm Josh. And I'm Colin. Thanks for watching. <laughs>